Okay, hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, I'll keep this introduction nice, short, and sweet because you are well familiar with who we're speaking with. This is Mitchell Scott, CEO of the Very Good Food Company. Mitchell, thanks for coming in once again on such short notice. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. So tons has happened. Uh, there's some shareholder questions outstanding. So we wanted to do an interview a little bit sooner than we normally would, uh, just so that we can speak directly to investors and answer some of the questions that are out there. So without further ado, we'll jump right into it. Um, first off, I want to say congratulations on the NASDAQ listing. Uh, that is huge. Um, something everyone is extremely excited about. As a direct question from shareholders, you know, what is management hoping will be the main benefit that they see from this listing? Yeah. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for the uh, the congrats. Uh, we're super excited to be on the NASDAQ. You know, a lot of hard work and effort went into to getting that listing. A uh, big thing for us is it's just an opportunity to broaden and diversify our shareholder base uh, and increase our visibility in the marketplace. Um, big piece of that is, you know, a lot of these trading apps like Robinhood, uh, you can only be listed on them if you're on the NASDAQ or the NYSE. So just making it easier for people to, to learn more about the company, to invest, uh, and to, to join us. And, you know, as, as part of that afterwards, we saw a $30 million financing. It was completed in mid October. It did create some questions for retail investors. The first of which is around the use of proceeds. Can you discuss what you intend to do with this new capital? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it was a uh, roughly 37 million Canadian, um, and I mean for us, you know, we're right in the middle of of growing and executing and scaling. Um, we've got a few big capital projects underway. Uh, the first one being the Rupert facility. Um, so we're about halfway through that pro project. You know, it's a, a 25 million dollar project total. Uh, we put one line in. We're in the process of installing that second line, and basically, we really want to make sure that we have enough product to to meet demand. You know, very, for the first four years or so, we were production limited. So we were, you know, turning down retailers. We were just didn't have enough product to go around. Uh, recently, with Rupert coming online, we've, you know, alleviated a lot of that those production constraints. We want to make sure that we're not in that position again, where we're having to to turn down sales because we can't can't make enough product. Uh, so scaling up Rupert is part of that. Uh, we've got a big product project underway in California as well at our Patterson facility. We're putting four lines in there. Another, obviously, you know, capital intensive project. Um, and then another area where we're focusing these funds is on our U.S. retail launch. Um, so we're launching into U.S. retail, you know, one of the biggest food markets in the world. We need to do marketing to support that launch. Uh, we need to make sure it's successful. We need to make sure the product once it hits shelves, you know, sells and keeps on selling. Um, so there's a lot of things we're doing to support that uh, launch on the marketing front, uh, which you guys will be seeing coming uh, down the pipeline very shortly. Um, so those are two of the big things. The other third one I just wanted to touch on uh, on lastly is our, our R&D efforts. Um, so, you know, in order to to kind of keep up with, with everyone else, we need to be continuing to innovate. We need to be putting out best in class products. Um, so we, we've got an R&D team. Uh, they're making these great products. Uh, we recently won an XD award actually for our meatballs. Uh, so basically just continuing to invest in R&D and make sure that we are at the cutting edge, you know, of, of plant based protein. Uh, and also starting to look into other categories as well. So not just focusing on meat, but going into cheese, dairy alternatives, ready to eat meals, and really just broadening our R&D scope. Um, so those are the kind of three main buckets uh, that we'll be using these funds for. That makes sense. And I won't get too sidetracked, but I'll say I tried the meatballs last night. They're ridiculously good. Um, very good, yeah, I guess I could I'm, say. Uh, I may actually be having some for dinner tonight. So uh, <laughs> I'm trying the uh, the new signature, the burger tonight. So I'll let you know how that goes. Sweet. Um, so, okay. So in terms of the financing, uh, let's talk about the price. How do you feel about the pricing of this offering in comparison to previous deals that you've done? Yeah, I think if you, if you look at the capital markets overall, I think, you know, a lot has changed, uh, since, you know, th the first half of 2021, uh, it's definitely become more challenging to raise capital. Just as a quick example, you know, in the first half of 2021, there were 10 U S listed companies with a market cap between 50 and 300 million that raised over $10 million, uh, in the consumer space. In the second half of 2021, there have been less than five transactions in the same space, which is, you know, the space we're in. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, we, we added close to 20 new institutional shareholders. Uh, we priced this transaction in, in the headwinds of quite a bit of market volatility uh, with just two to three days of, of market exposure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we believe that we this transaction priced in much better terms um, than, than may otherwise be expected for a newly listed company with limited liquidity. Um, there have been similar transactions with deeper discounts uh, or substantially more warrant coverage, you know, sometimes over 100 percent where we only did, you know, 50 percent warrant coverage. Um, and yeah. 
And I was actually pretty interested because seeing that this raise, uh, it was a capital raise entirely from U.S. institutions, which you guys have been a, a very much a retail powered stock. So um, does this financing introduce, is it fair to say it introduces a new base of shareholders for the company? Yeah, it absolutely does. You know, uh, a lot of our pre previous financings uh, were to retail investors. Uh, and, you know, we love our, our retail investor base. We want all our, our consumers to be investors. We want all our investors to be consumers. Um, but, you know, as as we grow and mature as a public company, we need to start, you know, bringing in a, a bit of an institutional base as well. We need to start getting analyst coverage. Um, so, you know, this is an opportunity to do that. And so we brought in, you know, 20 institutions. Uh, I also think that having, you know, some some long institutions in there is going to help the, the kind of volatility we've seen in the past. Um, so, yeah, so for us, it's just kind of a step in that next direction. Uh, but we continue to, to love our, our retail base and supporters. We just want to broaden that base, you know, with these institutions. That makes sense. And in terms of, you know, overall raising capital, something that I thought of right away is, well, Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods, your peers have raised enormous amounts of capital. So, you know, can you compare the amounts that they've raised to what you've raised so far? Yeah. So I think the the big kind of difference is that Beyond, for example, raised all of their their money privately through a you know, series A, B, C, D, E, F. So prior to going public, they'd raised, you know, probably half a billion dollars, definitely hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, prior to us going public, we'd raised, you know, 2,600,000 or so. Um, so I think it's to be expected that we're going to need to continue to raise capital. I'm not saying we're going to have to raise it on that same level, but we do want to compete with these companies. We do want to grow. We want to scale our operations. Uh, and part of that, you know, involve, involves raising capital uh, to help to help scale. Yeah, that's certainly fair. And let's why don't we just shift gears a little bit? Let's talk about the recent China announcement. Um, would you be able to provide more information on basically the size and the scope of the program, whether you think it might uh, take away focus from what you're doing in North America? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the the key takeaway from this is it is a pilot project. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of different interesting areas and opportunities for growth that we're looking at. You know, China's you know massive population. So we wanted to make sure that we learned a little bit more about the market uh, before we went there. Um, so we're working with a group that specializes in bringing challenger brands into the Chinese market. Um, it's basically a, you know, a, a three month consulting contract. They're going in there doing market research. They're doing a translation of our packages. They're learning more about the consumers, be testing some stuff online. Uh, it's very low touch on our end. You know, our, our one of our, the people in our marketing team is spending you know, maybe a couple hours per week on it. Uh, and then this agency is doing most of the work. So at the end of the day, we have all the information we need so that when we're ready to go to China, we're ready to go. We're not going to then kick off that process. Um, it doesn't mean we're launching, you know, next year uh, into that market necessarily, but it does mean that when the time comes, we'll be fully ready, fully prepared with an offering that resonates with those consumers so that we can hit the ground running. Okay. Yeah. That, that puts things into perspective. That makes more sense. Um, you know, from an operational standpoint, uh, what should we expect in the next couple of quarters? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, big focus is on the U.S. retail market. You know, it's huge. There's so many grocery stores, restaurants. Uh, for us, continue scaling our Rupert production. Uh, we're working on a, a packaging line there for food service right now. So expect us to, to make moves in food service next year. Uh, and really just expect us to grow, scale up our production. And as we do that, scale up our distribution, scale, scale up our e-commerce sales, um, and just kind of continue building our brand. So that makes sense in this interview. Again, it's meant to be short and sweet. Really appreciate you answering those questions directly to shareholders. We're going to get this video out there as, as fast as we can. Um, again, congratulations to you guys. <laughs> One thing that we can all agree on is you guys have made some really, really substantial moves in the last wow, year and a half. I guess it's been now a pretty short amount of time. So congrats to you. Thank you for all the time you spend with, with us talking to shareholders. Yeah, thanks so much, Kevin. Appreciate the questions, everyone. And uh, yeah, happy to, to do another one of these, you know, whenever you guys want. And, you know, we'll take you up on it. So thanks again, and we'll talk to you really soon. Cheers, guys.